shopkeepers and merchants in games exist to sell you useful items and to buy haunted dolls that you really don't want to keep in your inventory. Ah, Miss Angie. Just adorable. Porcelain dolls are very popular, you know. As such, the relationship between the shopkeeper and the player is a mutually beneficial one from which you both prosper. But should you choose to break this contract and steal from a video game shopkeeper, beware. More than a few of them are waiting for just such an opportunity to flip out and go absolutely ham on your stupid unprepared face with more ferocity and firepower than most bosses. Here then are seven murderous shopkeepers that you really don't want to steal from. Enjoy and beware some spoilers ahead for the following games. Uh, Mike, unrelated to what I was saying earlier, do you want to buy this doll? Oh, it looks, yeah, it looks nice. It's normal. Is it? Oh, normal. I yeah, nothing. Normal dolls. It's not haunted. Why would you? No, well, I wouldn't want a haunted one, but I'm glad you're saying this one's normal. No, I know it's hovering a foot off the ground, but that's uh, yeah. that's a that's is that a that feature. A feature? Okay, yeah. Great. Wow, these normal dolls are getting it's, really um, good. It's um, baby floats a lot. Is it? The head is supposed to do that. It's supposed to spin around. And does it feel it's nappy as well? Uh, it feels, yeah, well, yeah, it fills its nappy, eyes, ears, mouth, fluids everywhere, basically. Okay, great. Sounds like a bargain. In most Zelda games, you, as Link, are trying to save the world from annihilation at the hands of some incarnation of Ganon. Therefore, I think it's a little rich that shopkeepers are trying to charge you money for the stuff you need to stop them all being plunged into a new age of darkness. Not even a don't get plunged into a new age of darkness discount. Unbelievable. In The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, however, everything is taking place inside the dreams of a giant fish. And if you complete your quest to wake him up, the entire world will vanish. Which is probably why the maybe village shopkeeper feels justified in charging a staggering 980 rupees for a bow and arrow set. Now, there are two ways to get your hands on this essential piece of kit. The first is to embark on a truly epic deforestation campaign to slash 980 rupees out of bushes and patches of tall grass. The second is to nick it. If you pick up the bow and arrow set and try to walk out with it, the shopkeeper will stop you, of course. He's been at this shopkeeping lark a while, you imagine. He's seen all the tricks. All the tricks but one, it turns out, which is to run circles around him and then sprint out the door while his back is still turned. He's powerless against that one. I mean, kind of. I had to run really fast. Anyway, while you might think that you got away scot-free, if you return to the scene of the crime, get prepared for the consequences. Because it turns out that the shopkeeper is not only mad at you, but also easily the most powerful enemy in the game, with an energy beam that stun locks you in place, draining your hearts until you die. I mean, not even the final boss can do that. See? Casual. As a bonus, once you do resume playing, everyone you meet for the rest of the game will refer to you as Thief. So now you've got that to contend with as well. Oh, well that's rich coming from you, Mr. Stole Your Whole Deal from Mario. You're just testing me here, right, Kieran? I mean, when you place a huge sum of coin conspicuously within my reach, what do you expect me to do? Sounds good, mate. Hades is a game in which you spend almost the entire time frantically dashing around fighting 400 things at once. As such, it is a blessed relief when you reach a room that isn't full of 400 things that you have to fight at once, such as the semi-frequent chambers that contain the storefront of Charon, the Ferryman of the Dead. Charon has apparently branched out from ferrymanning into shopkeeping, and as such, is here to sell you various goodies that'll make your journey through the underworld easier, such as godly boons, chthonic keys, and of course, kebab and french fry combo meals. Hit this part. Presumably he has a deep fryer back there somewhere. After you've completed the game at least once, your repeat custom and friendly banter... <laughs> Classic Charon. Lead to him trusting you enough to occasionally leave his sacks of gold out in the open. An opportunity you absolutely can take advantage of, helping yourself to his hard-earned cash, a move the game describes as borrowing with extremely heavy inverted commas. Hey Charon, look at me. Try this though and Charon will immediately notice and teleport you to a space in Erebus that is either where he lives or some kind of ass-kicking dojo he set up to wail on people who try to steal from him. I'm guessing the latter. Let's settle this like gentlemen, Charon. 
And well on you he does, because Chiron is hard as nails even by Hades' high standards. He'll smack you with his boat oar, send out stunning shockwaves, and turn the whole fight arena into a bullet hell of floating purple clouds that are super difficult to dodge. Oh, blast! Ow! It was only 300 gold? What are you even using that money for? New hats? Because you should consider a new hat, is what I'm saying. However, hard as it is, there is still a benefit to going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the boatman. If you do manage to get Chiron to a low enough health level, he will call the fight off and, as a sign of reconciliation, present you with a rewards card that gives you 20% off future purchases in his shop. What a savings. <laughs> if only more shopkeepers would adopt this system. I reckon I could take Ronald McDonald. The key to a successful retail venture is finding a good location with plenty of customer footfall. So you kind of have to wonder what the shopkeepers in Spelunky were thinking when they set up shop in a dank abandoned cave full of traps and monsters. Maybe they have a thriving online store. That being said, there's absolutely no call for you, playing as an intrepid cave exploring Spelunker and possibly their only customer in months, to make things worse by attempting to apply the old five finger discount and help yourself to their wares without paying, either by grabbing something and making a run for it, or even worse, by killing the shopkeeper and grabbing what you want at your leisure. Now, while you might have got your hands on some sweet items for free, your joy is going to be short-lived. As are you, probably, because these shopkeepers do not like being stolen from. Leave the shopkeeper alive and you can quickly expect to encounter them again, going absolutely apeshit with a shotgun, pinballing around the level, bombarding you with buckshot, curses and some extremely stressful music. Kill them and you'll quickly discover that shopkeeping is apparently a very close-knit community because the exit to every level from now on has an irate shopkeeper guarding it. Spelunky 2 made stealing from the shopkeepers slightly less punitive. If you do it without harming anyone, they will forgive you after one level, meaning you don't have to spend the rest of the game worrying about a shopkeeper bursting out of the walls and shooting you in the face with a shotgun. Hopefully, you will have learned a valuable lesson about not stealing things in future. Or not. Man, the shopkeepers are right about you. As we have, I think, firmly established in this list so far, enraging a shopkeeper is generally a bad idea. It's even more of a bad idea in Isometric Shooter Enter the Gungeon, in which everyone either has a load of guns or is a sentient bullet, who also has a gun. <laughs> Trying to make your life easier on your gunnishing journey is Bello, the shopkeeper who will sell you guns and items and who will get mad and double his prices if you discharge a firearm in his store. Sorry, force of habit. Bellow's stance towards firearms being discharged in his store will change, however, if you choose to keep doing it. Keep messing with his inventory and Bellow will flip his lid and produce a shotgun that turns the whole place into a bullet hell nightmare of ricocheting energy balls that seems like it's really going to do some damage to the walls. And if you don't die from that, he can also just teleport you out of his shop and there's nothing you can do about it. There are in fact several ways to nick stuff in Enter the Gungeon, but your punishment for pilfering isn't just a hail of bullets from the shopkeeper. Every stolen item you take raises your curse level by one, making the game harder by adding more enemies, making them tougher to kill, and boosting their damage. I think I'm going to be the one doing a lot of cursing from here on out.
なんだこれえー、っと。Because Near Automata is a delight, the shop in the game is a small van with a skeleton moon face that crashes spectacularly, plays weird music, and sells you dresses and electrical components. <laughs> this is Emil, a character with way, way too much backstory to go into here. So, for the purposes of this video, let's just say that he's a cheery, sentient shop on wheels and leave it at that. But rather than stealing from his shop, as with other examples in this list, in Nero Automata you can actually break into your close friend Emil's home and steal his personal items. You know, just to keep things fresh. Do this twice and lovely Emil will catch you in this act of shocking betrayal, and to be fair, he takes it about as well as you could expect. So what? Slap on the wrists? Higher prices in the shop for a bit? Oh no, he wants to kill us. I'm beginning to sense a pattern here. Emil is, as you might expect, harder than an adamantium coated UFC fighter, being level 99, armed with a deadly beam cannon, and much more maneuverable than you'd imagine a sentient tuk tuk to be. He's also a total damage sponge, so you're going to be here a while even if you do manage to hurt him. The worst thing of all about this fight, though, is when you win. If you were expecting a reward or maybe a bonus cutscene or something, you're going to be disappointed. Instead, you just get a line of dialogue from the heartbroken Emil about how sad it is that power is the only thing that matters anymore, and then you're left to stand around awkwardly and think about what you've done. <laughs> Alright, but to be fair, I now do have this Emil head, so totally worth it. Welcome, welcome, my new toys. Now dance. Dance for me! Crypt of the Necro Dancer is a roguelike dungeon crawler with a twist. It's also a rhythm action game where you have to do everything in time with the background music. So good luck if you have no sense of rhythm. Related, I have no sense of rhythm. On your adventures through the game's dungeons, you will often come across the shopkeeper, a jovial merchant who sells items and, it must be said, has a truly impressive set of pipes, judging by his singing along to the background music. And yet, there are some Crypt of the Necro Dancer players who look at this fun loving fellow with the great singing voice and think to themselves, I should kill this guy so that I can steal all his items. To which I would say, Good luck! Hope you're good at Crypt of the Necro Dancer. That's because if you damage the shopkeeper at all, he will rush you and immediately start attacking. He deals heavy damage and, crucially, can move diagonally, which means you're going to have a hard time escaping. He will pursue you relentlessly until one of you is dead. Place your bets on who it's going to be. Good guess. If you do manage to kill the shopkeeper, you are rewarded with the Crown of Greed, a super judgy bit of blinged out headwear that doubles all your gold pickups but also causes you to lose one gold on every beat. Which, considering how many beats there are in the average Necro Dancer song, it's quite a lot of gold. Plus, and I think this is the true worst consequence of your actions, you don't get to listen to his beautiful singing voice anymore. He's singing with the angels now. All right. So got a girl to find. Take a short walk around Colombia, the floating sky city from Bioshock Infinite, and you'd be forgiven for thinking it was all golden statues, robot horses, and zero G barbershop quartets. If you should ever There is a grimier side to Columbia, though, as exemplified by the Graveyard Shift, a bar in the industrial area of Finkton that caters to a clientele of heavily armed hard nuts who look like they'd shoot you as soon as look at you.
although to be fair, if you've picked up a guitar and started playing it unsolicited and no one's shot you already, you're probably fine. There is one thing that they don't stand for at the graveyard shift, however, and that's stealing. Just walking behind the bar causes the bartender to cock his shotgun, and if you take anything or use the possession figure to try and hack the vending machines to get a discount, the mood suddenly switches from surly to downright murderous. <laughs> Which seems like a bit of an overreaction, unless you've already done the bit where you go down to their basement and start playing the guitar, in which case I think it's totally justified. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video about murderous shopkeepers that you definitely shouldn't enrage or they'll kill you. Now I'm just going to look uh, the other way at something else, but don't you touch either of these two videos, they're my prize stock. And if you were to steal them, I would become enraged. Anyway, oh, there's something interesting over there in the city. Do it! Stay away from those videos! Don't, though, do actually click them. Please.